Hi everyone. I am Wicked Crafty Mom, also known as April, and I am back today to talk about making gra background pages. I don't know what this video is going to look like. I'm trying another new position with the camera, so we'll see how that works. But I have put together an envelope and I can show you guys how to make these at some point but I put together an envelope here that is uh, full of the stuff that I wanted to show you today or the stuff that I wanted to use so I'm emptying out my bag of stuff in front of me and sorry if I'm hitting my cat but I'm just just a hot mess okay so I made this card or this tag and I just took some paper that I had uh, decoupaged on, or yeah, collaged on. And then I painted over it and added some designs. I used some, um, this was a cover for a glue thing, glue container. Um, and it just made a neat pattern around the, the circle there. So I used that as a stamp just painted some lines and made some um, made the made it spray I made some black spray um, on the card so that's why I wanted to show you that because I really like that but we're going to be we're mostly talking about um, backgrounds today and so what I wanted to show you is you can actually buy background stamps at the store and you just print this over and over and over again on the background on the paper and you end up with a background um, you can also use other designs if you want to for yours. I've got um, some swirls and leaves. I'm, I keep turning it upside down like you're in front of me. I've got swirls and leaves and I've got these witch boots that I got at Goodwill. Um, and I really like these witch boots. They're so cute. And they would make a great background if I just stamp over and over but if you don't have any stamps or you don't have any stamps that you want to use for backgrounds um, you can actually go to the dollar store and you can get those foam um, shape stamps and I've done that before uh, plenty of times I have a huge couple of huge amounts um, of them but these are some that I have picked up over time these little birds dragonfly and you can just stick them to a piece of cardboard and Amy from Al John made some stamps out of these and then she was showing how she took some masking tape and folded it and and made a little handle for them so that is the coolest thing I think I've seen ever and so I'm actually going to I didn't have I didn't have one on here so I'm gonna take just a little piece of masking tape and you fold it in half at the top but leave you know the bottom half not folded and then you just stick it on and you've got a tab and a way to pick it up out of the paint without sticking your fingers in the paint and so I just used these pieces of book cover that were for a book that I was never gonna <clears throat> it was too beat up it was too eaten by one of our rabbits so, um, I was never going to use it. So, this makes great stamp backing because it uh, is nice and solid. And, um, sturdy. And so, I made these stamps. This is from a butterfly that um, I just cut the... The shapes of the wings out inside with an exacto knife you can pick up exacto knives at the dollar tree as well and um, so these are stickers and so you can just stick them on cardboard or you can glue them on if you want them to last longer um, so you can buy them you can make them however you want and i'm going to show you how to make a background stamp um, yourself even if you don't have a lot of stuff to work with because if you take 
for example, cardboard pieces and you stack them a couple thick, you'll get almost the same width as the foam that I have. Sorry, I've got paint under my nails. My nails are gross. It's all paint um, from this, from all this. So if you make a couple layers of cardboard, if your cardboard is thin like this, you could stack it a couple layers deep and you could have some depth for, um, for leaving a mark. But I just took some foam and I cut diagonal lines on it to make the diamonds here and um, then glued them in a pattern. And I'll show you what that came out looking like is a background. Where'd it go? I got lots of stuff here. Um, this one. So this one I used for, I used the black one. So it goes like this. So I used the black one and just ran a couple of row, like a ro couple of rows down. And then this white one I took and I actually, this is just masking tape and I just stamped it on masking tape. Um, on Al John, she made masking tape washi. And so this, I kind of just kind of ran with that idea. And then I took this smaller one and painted it white and stamped on top of that. Um, and then I just went in with my permanent marker, my black permanent marker, and I just drew some kind of shadowing. It wasn't anything like I'm not an artist. Um, I just wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it. So I, so that's what I did. So I added dimension to it. So, um, I'll show you how to make these, a stamp like this right now, actually. And then we'll look at some of the backgrounds that I've created, but you can take these foam shapes, you can get these um, all over. Um, you can get them at the craft stores, you can get them, you can buy big sheets of foam and you can cut, cut them. Um, actually, one year for my youngest son's birthday party, I did that because um, I was making stuff for a Minecraft themed birthday party in Minecraft. If you don't know, is based. it's a video game, but it's all squares. Everything is square in it, even the the players and the, the characters in it. So we did a Minecraft theme party. So I cut out like a bazillion, and these aren't even them, a bazillion um, foam squares to use f to make, decorate Minecraft swords um, like you can do in the game. So anyway, so I all I'm gonna do for this is I'm just gonna take these squares and I'm gonna start making a pattern using my diamond, using the top of this to um, kind of create the area for, create a line. Give me some guidance is what I'm looking at. Guidelines, guidelines. Okay. And so I'm just connecting them together to leave a hole of negative space <clears throat> too, because that's part of the stamp and part of the design. So now I'm going to take the scissors I hid from myself and I'm going to cut it. And I am going to do that little masking tape tricky. And I have my computer back now so I can actually get all those links up and going and connected today. I'm super excited about that. Okay. And so now you can just take your stamps and use them like we'll show you in a little bit. Um, this one has a mark from the clothespin I had it clipped in. And I'm okay with that because I know that actually once I find my heat gun, I can heat it up and this will puff right out of it. I can heat up the foam and the foam will expand and get rid of the mark that it has on it. So this is another super fast and easy stamp. And this one's going to fill up a lot of space and this one's going to fill up a lot of space. So if you're looking to make background papers, which is what uh, this particular backgrounds and accents, I guess, um, which is what I'm looking at for this particular uh, venture today. Um, 
you want something maybe that can fill up some space. So I'm going to show you some examples of accents and backgrounds that I have made. So um, these are all made with stamps that I actually carved out. These are the stamps right here that I've made. Um, and I really liked this diamond pattern and how it came out. So I ended up uh, making it bigger. That's, that's how that happened actually. And so I've got all these stamps that I've made and I was just running some lightly thinned acrylic paints um, over them so that I could see how they were. I wanted to test them. Um, so this is just some scrap paper that I had from a page that I made. So these are just things that I can now cut out, cut around, rip out, whatever I want to do with them to stick in my books. This is another paper that I made based on a um, a paper that I actually, a scrapbooking page that I have. I've just got to check and make sure we're still recording because I've done that before. Oh, it looks like we are. Okay. So I have a scrapbooking paper that I really enjoy and I like, I like the way it makes me feel when I look at it. And so I was trying to recreate that. So the paper has basically these colors and then it has, um, doesn't have the black, it has white alphabet um, on it. And so uh, this is numbers. I have a number stencil that I got and um, I will link that below as well. And this is one of the stamps that I made. This is my bunny butt stamp. Um, we have, um, we have rabbits and until recently we had five and we now have four. We lost one of our rabbits recently. Um, but we have uh, four, four bun buns and we love them and they love us and we play to, the kids play with them. And so um, we're big bunny people. We have bunnies and we have a cat. So um, you will see bunny themed stuff from time to time. So this is just a stamp that I made. And again, I just stamped it over and over and over again on the background. Let's see, where is that stamp? Where's my bunny butt? You are not my bunny butt. You are my bunny butt. So this is the stamp that I made that with. And I liter literally just over and over and over. And so while I was doing that, I had it on top of this. So you can see where, um, maybe you can't, but where I was stamping and I went off the sides, I had this paper underneath as a catch-all uh, on purpose because I really want to use this as background stuff too. So I, I wanted to make sure that it looked like this came from a larger piece, even though it didn't. So I continued, so I continued the pattern off the edges. Um, this is another stamp that I made. It's supposed to look like mermaids or dragons. Um, this is oh, this is a page I made with a book page and acrylic paints and masking tape and my stamps. And this is one that I made with coffee dyed paper. I've been watching a whole lot of Al John and I have noticed um, and and 49 dragonflies and I really like um, the experimenting that they did on the on paper that they have done and showed showed me how to do so this is just I had sprinkled some coffee granules from the instant coffee on the wet page um, what I did here is I mixed some some kind of dark coffee up and um, put it in this bottle here so that I could have it to to do stuff like this make more splotches um, and so I have one that I have black acrylic paint in as well and just water mixed the black acrylic paint with water and that is uh, kind of gives an inky effect and I think I've got something I can show you that with in a minute now this is one that I made with stencils and this is the stencil that I made 
and this is the other half of it and I just cut out a yeah, just cut out a circle kept the circle attached the little masking tape thing on here um, and what I did was I took the black paint and I just filled in with the circle I used a makeup sponge and just dabbed it on and so the longer I went so I did this first here and just went over and over and over again so that this would be a background if you continued it all the way up and down the page but I wanted to show different ways that you could do it because this one kind of looks like the moon if you and all I did was take this for that and then just used a masking technique and held that on and took my pouncer and pounced the snot out of it so this is the one with, that is the outside and this is the one that is the inside and so I just kept kept playing with it until I ran out of paint the other thing I did here was I traced inside this with marker and so this is water this is washable marker it's you know water soluble so I just made a circle and I took some water and I just traced around the circle and the ink kind of goes where the water goes and it depends on how much water you put and how much ink there is and um, whatnot but that's how I got all of these three things or four things here it was by just drawing a circle and then tracing around it so that's kind of a neat effect too and again you can do this across the whole page just draw different colored circles and you have a, created a little bit of interest in the background um, so these are more accents that I've made I just dipped whoops I just dipped the bottom of this in some paint and spun it and I used some other little stampy things that I had um, laying around from markers and you know the covers to these and the backs of the the backs of the markers and whatnot um, this is actually paper that I just painted with tempera paint it's not dyed um, but tempera paint ha is nice and um, transparent and so I've been playing a lot with these because they're very watercolory and um, but consistent like they keep their color consistent not like if you are doing actual watercolors and you put some water in sometimes it's stronger the color stronger sometimes the water stronger so this is a nice this this keeps um, consistent so these are actually at the dollar store too and so I'm gonna be buying more colors of this now that I really like what I'm doing with it um, this is house paint nope this is acrylic paint just regular acrylic paint um, I don't think it's even watered down I think it's just painted on this is crayon that I colored in with and I was hoping that I could find my heat gun because I wanted to see what happens when the wax melts but I couldn't find my heat gun so I'm still looking for that because uh, I know it exists I've seen it before and I've used it so um, this is just a partially done this is I had some paint left over so I just worked on the top here and then the next time I have some paint left over maybe I'll work on some more stripes or maybe I'll leave it like this because it kind of looks like the ocean here um, so who knows and this is just more playing with a stamp and tracing around things I was I'm working on color coordinating my uh, containers that I keep my stuff in and my um, my craft stuff in because it's all in the dining room so I'm trying to color coordinate everything and kind of make everything match and look nice to the best of my abilities um, and so I've been painting with my acrylic paints and the colors that I decided I was going to use this is another one that is just stamp over and over and over again I really like this coffee cup stamp so I wanted to be able to um, to use it to make a paper and then another one that's a heart now this was a scrap piece of paper when I started with it this piece was already gone but I didn't worry about that I just kept going as though 
it was still there. So if I rip any of this off, it looks like it's been already um, gotten to. So I don't know. I kind of like that. I might even just use this as a, it looks like this. I mean, that would make a great decoration on a page. Okay, so more stamps. I made some borders. Um, I really like this plot to twist one. I made that stamp as well. Um, more playing with this was I took that green paper that I had made and squished on top of it with this paper and I got a kind of neat effect on that. And this is more just taking scraps and stamps. I can use this you know on its own or I can cut a piece off here and there. Same with this, I can just rip some off if I want to. Um, so I don't think, you know, anything is wasted. This is a bunch of collage. This is a collage paper. I made a circle. I didn't really, I was going to use it on something and then I changed my mind. I cut it out with a scalloped edge and I had done the same. Um, I had inked it around the edges and uh, still wasn't happy with it. And then I found my swirl stamp and I just started stamping around the edges and now it kind of looks like a doily to me, um, which is cool. That makes me happy. And so I've got these pieces that I can use from that. This is actually a, a doily that I did photocopy um, that I bought at the store, photocopied it and colored and painted it with uh, tempera paint. This is a page that I made using an umbrella stamp. No idea why I decided an umbrella was a great idea, but I do like the cool effect that it has. And all I did was, as I was painting other things, I would just add a little bit of whatever paint was, and I'd just make the next row. I'd be like, okay, I'm using blue tempera paint. This row is gonna be blue tempera paint. Okay, next one I used was yellow. All right, cool. Um, this was me trying to mask the word magical and it didn't work, so I have Ajika and I'm not going to use that the way I was going to. Uh, this is just acrylic painted paper. And this is tempera painted paper. I liked it because it's got the lines on it, so I used it for a journaling piece on uh, my actual journal. And then this is just a this is just me playing around. This is more, what can I make this inky stuff do? And so I can make this inky stuff splat, like that. And then I can just set it aside to dry and we're good to go. And apparently my intention was to grab papers. Oh, no, I did. Good, good, good. I grabbed papers that I can use to show you different techniques. So I have, I wanted to show you this too, because I have these strips of paper from a project that I am currently working on. Um, it's a little ephemera book, or it's not little, it's a big ephemera book and I want to kind of use it as my working ephemera thing. Just kind of make everything a little more uh, streamlined in my box that I work out of. So I've got these papers that I just cut off um, to use. And so one of the things you could do is just kind of collage a line, collage these, and then when you cut them off, you've got this paper and you just need a piece of copy paper or a piece of newspaper cut to whatever size you want it to be. Um, so if you don't want, you know, the whole page, say you're only working with half a page, you know, then you can do it this way. Make stripes like this, or you could make stripes like this. And that's really all you would need for a page, um, for a background to get started. Um, however, that was not my intention. That was just a byproduct of what I was doing. 
So this is my intention. These are some coffee dyed worksheets from my kids schooling. And this is just, uh, da -da -da -da. what am I going to use? I'm going to use this big one. Okay, so I am grabbing my paintbrush. And I have my, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I have my plate sitting with my tools on top of it. So I've got these scraps. So I am going to just take, and I like watering it down a little bit, my acrylic paint. So I left some water in the brush because I just like the effect that that has. And this is the stamp, one of the stamps that you just watched me use. And I did not do the masking tape trick, and I'm feeling very silly. Okay, masking tape trick. Here we are. I like it. It just gives you something to grab onto so you don't have to stick your fingers in paint. Not that I mind sticking my fingers in paint, but I like options. I like not having to. And just letting it be my choice. And I'm just using black paint because that's what I happen to have out. But any color is good. So. And each one of them is coming out different, mostly because I'm pressing in different spots at each, each time. You can also take a, you can, you know, push down, you can use stiffer cardboard, you can, but very quickly I just made a background that is also attached to a spot where if I wanted to I could write over here or I can write in between the cracks there. And so. You know what, I'm just going to finish this because why not? And then I'll have these circles. I can cut them out if I want to. Mm -hmm. I am not doing this. Yeah, okay. We'll do it this way. There. I can cut the circles out of however I want. And I'll try to stop putting my paintbrush in my mouth. It stops me from talking. Um, and you can see where that um, particular clothespin took the paint. It made a dent, and the clothespin area doesn't leave the paint, it looks like. So that's cool to know. Because if I wanted to, I could make these have texture on purpose by, like, heating them up with my heat gun and pushing stuff into them. Okay, so there's one piece of paper done. Now, the other thing that I usually do, or that I really like to do, is just paint... Aye. Okay, so paint. There. There's some paint. Temper paint. And here's some temper paint. And here's some temper paint gunk. Okay. Oh man, I just got a wicked good idea. Wicked crafty idea. Alright, so I'm taking this and I'm spreading it out, right? And while I'm doing that, I can be using this stamp and see how it has that watercolor effect. And now I'm spreading it out still over here. Da, 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 da. I'm just kind of wiping off the brush onto this. Now I've got a little bit of black because I had some black on my brush from before. So 
There's a little black mixing in, but I'm not worried about it because I kind of like the way that looks. Accidental, though it might be. There. And I just keep using the same... Ooh, you know which one I want to use? Ooh, I'm throwing stuff around here. All right, so I am going to make this dragonfly because I am really excited about this dragonfly. Mm hmm. Ooh, I even like that it has the brown because I had stamped from I had stamped using my ink pad. Oops, I'm getting ink on the back of this, but I'm totally cool with that too. So I'm going to keep spreading this out. And if I need to add more, I can add more, but it's I think it spreads really well. My point was you can make more than one background at one time and you can also be, you know, kind of creative about how you use your resources too at the same time. So I'm making two different, totally, totally different kinds of paper at the same time, but using the same supplies. Since I've got stuff out, I may as well use it as many ways as I can. So, I'm going to keep doing this, and I'm going to let those dragonflies dry. Let's see. Oh, here's a little more. So you can just kind of pick up the temper paint in a way and just move it around. There. Okay. I'm using the snot out of my temper paint. Okay. And now I'm going to make another dragonfly because I didn't have any in green yet. Mm. Okay, so that's my microphone cord. Because of course it is. Alright, so I'm going to let this dry for a minute while I'm still playing with this one. Painting my mic cord, as one does. And I didn't use my catch paper this time, and I'm kind of bumming, because it would have been pretty. And I'm just kind of mixing it up however I want. There. And now, I'm going to play a little bit more with this, because I want to see something. Oh, I can! Oh my goodness. So I took my stamp, and because this is still a little bit wet, it's taking the pigment off the page and kind of making it ghosty shape, ghosty shapes. And so just with some supplies I had around the house, I've made, and look, now I've got this green ghosty here and worst case look at this I've still got my my green paint here handy there and now it's like a piece this was a piece of paper and some temper paint that you can buy for a buck and I'm having a blast doing it when this is dry, if I want to, I can trace around the diamonds to kind of make them stick out. But I like that they're kind of ghosty. And so this is going to go dry back there. There. And here's another thing that I wanted to show you. And I don't know why I didn't cut it out earlier. I do know I thought of cutting it out earlier, but that's as far as I got that. I love use brown paper bags and I still have my black paint out here I'm gonna put this one back and I'm gonna use this my foam brush here all right so I am going to use this brown paper bag that I'm cutting right now There's that. 
and I had brought out my stamps, my alphabet stamps, so that I could use them and show you kind of a, another way to decorate with even if the only stamps you have are alphabet stamps, you can make a background. And I have these big foam ones that I've had for a long time. And I probably just put it way too thick, but you know what? I'm okay with that. That T does not look like a T, it looks like an I, but look at that, it's getting more and more T-like. So we'll go with this. It's a little gloppy. That's okay. I don't need it to be perfect. I just need it to look interesting. And there, I can do more, more of these. Let's see, I've got an F. And these are all from different sets of letters. And these are all, whoop, different si sizes. <laughs> Let's try that again. I like that and different shapes I know what happened I forgot to wipe my water off <laughs> that's why everything is all oops that's backwards that's okay and so just this makes a great background or you can take it and cut the pieces out or use it for a border or and you can put the pieces the pieces the letters upside down you can put them right side up you can put them sideways doesn't matter this would look really good on this black um black this brown paper bag it would look good with white as well i think but 